Granulating watercolors are serious magic, but there is a paint maker that I'm not sure you've ever heard of before. I'm gonna introduce you to Izzy Watercolors out of the Netherlands, and uh, her sort of granulating watercolor magic is definitely worth your time. Let's get into it. Izzy Watercolors is a one-woman powerhouse. Yeah, she's a paint slinger who knows how to get stuff done. And over the years, she has created an incredible collection of primarily granulating pigments that, uh, yeah, they'll blow your mind. I got to sit down with Izzy actually in person, face to face, when I was in Europe earlier this year. From if under you accept that you cannot control watercolors or granulating watercolors, then you get the best results. If you just accept whatever the outcome is, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Izzy watercolors reveal so much to us about the medium at large, but are also, in my opinion, the most curious granulators out there. So while I introduce you to this amazing paint slinger, I'm also going to share my secrets for getting the most out of granulating watercolors. Okay, Izzy's awesome. We're going to get into that more later, but what's a granulating watercolor paint? So. Basically, you've got pigment particles, and some are larger and heavier, and some are smaller, and some can grind down easier, and some are harder to grind down in the mulling process. So when a pigment granulates, or when a paint granulates, it means that some of the pigment particles in that formulation are bigger and or heavier than others in the same formulation, and they kind of sink into the paper where some of the others don't. And so you see some of those particles. I find that folks have a love or hate relationship with granulating watercolors. There's not often an in-between. I'm definitely on the love side of things because I adore texture. Granulating watercolors are going to be all about texture more than anything else. They also have that kind of cool chameleon, kind of a unicorn mystical kind of vibe because they essentially are color shifting but without the whole shimmer thing going on which if you know me you know i love that now as i go through this very chaotic yet somewhat somehow still satisfying swatching session with all of my izzy watercolors i want to tell you a little bit about what izzy taught me when it comes to how to get the most out of your granulating paints when Izzy and I met in Delft, she actually brought me a box full of goodies. And that is the single most reason that I have this incredible collection of her paints. And I just had to take a moment to say how grateful I am. So general rule of thumb, and I knew this going into my chat with Izzy, paper number one is so important. Giving your granulating paints a place to kind of rise and fall into the crevices of a paper is so important. So that makes us think of really rough watercolor papers potentially being the best option. Number two, moisture. Spraying down your paper before you begin playing around, making sure that you have a lot of water on the page. Yep, that means making puddles. You know how I love watercolor puddles. Number three is friction. And I use this word with all due respect, but I call it bullying the paint around a little bit. You know, moving that paint around, fussing a little bit more than you would expect to. Just that push and pull of getting the paint on the paper, spritzing it, moving it, stroking it with your brush, and then kind of repeating the process. All of those three kind of details or approaches are going to bring out even more of that granulating, textury awesomeness that you've been seeing on the screen here. One of the awesome layers that makes Izzy's watercolors so incredibly visually powerful and just super emotionally interesting to me as an artist is where she is sourcing her pigments and then how she combines some of those with modern pigments. Now, there's a lot more mystery that I discovered about this paint collection as I continued to paint with it, but that's still to come. I was so enamored with Izzy and all that she does that on the spot that evening in that little restaurant by the canals, we started to develop the ideas for a collaboration. And at the time of recording this video, that collaboration launched only a week ago. 
And it's this beautiful little palette. It's an abstract representation of a magnolia, but it also looks a lot like flames. And I love the intersection of those two kind of imagery elements and what they meant for us as artists, like growing and having a fire in your belly for something. And on top of that, we were able to collaborate with Caitlin Bongers, who is an incredible ceramicist, and her and Izzy are friends, and had collaborated a bunch in the past prior to me getting involved. And yeah, so we have mixing palettes from Caitlin, also with a magnolia. And I'm just so proud of the work that we've done as three completely independent women business owners and how we are just living for supporting each other. And it's just been a blast and I can't wait to see what we do next. Of course, I wanted to create a piece with these paints after I finished swatching. But based on the low granulating that I was seeing with the paper I used for the swatching sheets, I chose the mega. I chose the big cojones, the, the winner winner chicken dinner of papers. And that was 100% cotton handmade rough watercolor paper. And I knew this paper wouldn't fail in showing off the granulation. And I was right. You can see here, it just is stunning. Chef's kiss all the things from the moment that first bit of water and paint touched that rough, intensely textured paper, those pigments started to separate. But then I remembered I had swatched these paints, the Magnolia collection, for example, our collaborative collection, so many times. And I went back to look on the papers that I had used for some of those swatching sessions. I just assumed I had used the really heavy handmade stuff, but uh, I was wrong. I used a very classic paper, one that I use all the time, and that is a normal texture, Academy Cold Press. And y'all, as you can see, the granulation on Academy Cold Press, which isn't considered a rough paper, is like off the charts granulating. I had even used a really affordable 100% cotton cold press paper that I've recently become pretty happy with. D from our community had recommended it to me and it's called Fias. You can find links below to all of the supplies I've been using. And even that paper performed better than the arches pad of rough paper. Now, before I give you my final woohoo about this whole granulating paper situation, I need to tell you this. The more I paint with Izzy watercolors, the more I am enchanted. And I'm going to give you a little plant metaphor, whether you like it or not. One of my favorite plants that I've discovered over the last year has been the Hoya. The Hoya is a really strange plant. Some people know it as a wax plant. This plant looks kind of ho-hum, depending on the species or the cultivar that you're collecting. And I'm probably using all the wrong words, but it has layers of interest. It's got beautiful foliage most of the time. It has an elusive flowering pattern or time of year that it flowers, and they can be really difficult to get to flower. And then the flowers, when they do happen, can fill up the biggest room with the most fragrant, beautiful scent. And I kind of see granulating watercolors like I do Hoya. They're like a very wonderful, sweet tasting, creative onion, if you will. There are layers and layers and layers of magic and mysticism and mystery to kind of peel back as you enjoy their existence in your life. Granulating watercolors, just like a Hoya plant, are not a one-trick pony, and you cannot always take them at face value. And my little happy or sad accident discovery here with the paper is a testament to that even further. You have to give granulating watercolors, and heck, you have to give all your art supplies at large. You've got to give them a chance. And you can do that best by diving deeper into experimenting, going beyond traditional swatching. Some granulating paints need to be splashed onto a larger piece of paper and have more area to move and groove. Some will just kind of explode and separate immediately and then kind of fade as they drop. Izzy watercolors granulate like they are filled with a million little magicians or creative wizards. 
you never quite know what they're going to do at any given stroke of your brush. And that, to me, makes them the ultimate granulating watercolor paint that you need to try. They're incredible. And so is the woman behind them. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to introduce you today. Happy painting.